The influencers must be protected at all costs. These poor, poor, ignorant children are just so cute in their absurdity and stupidity. You can only laugh. Influencers are slammed for posing in blackface in a horribly misguided effort to show solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement. What is wrong with these people? Oh, man. You know what? Uh, they, 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 they recently banned an episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I guess Netflix pulled it or something. The episode was literally mocking blackface and they pulled it. These young people, these influencers have no idea what this is or why it's offensive. So they go ahead and do it thinking it's supportive and then they get ripped to shreds because of it. Two shreds, I say. I'm going to show you some of these pictures. Man, bless their sweet little hearts. These morons of social media. Now their lives are probably over. The Daily Mail reports, several influencers are sharing photos of themselves in blackface in a severely misguided attempt to show solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement. A handful of Instagram influencers, mostly based in Eastern Europe and the Middle East, have posted photos and videos of themselves with brown and black makeup alongside captions that claim to show solidarity with black people. Here's one where the person says that they wish they were black today more than ever, sending my love and full support to the people who demand equality and justice for all races anywhere in the world. What is this supposed to be? All right, we got to we got we got to clarify some things though, okay? We're going to get we're going to get in trouble on this one because the truth matters. This is not blackface. Literally not. Blackface was very specific. It was white actors denying places uh, roles for for black actors in plays. And they did it in a way that was 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 deri- uh, deri- it was uh, derogatory. Put it that way. It was meant to mock, belittle, and deny them a place on the stage. It was a very specific style of painting their face and wearing gloves. It is not bronzing your skin and putting on a wig. However, in recent times, over the over the past several years, this has come to reflect what blackface is. And I don't believe it's genuine. I believe for the most part, it's an attempt at becoming angry and outraged at anything you possibly can. So you have, you have the go- Governor Ralph Northam, right? That dude wore overt blackface, okay? And what happened to him? Nothing. He's the governor of Virginia. Nobody cared. Justin Trudeau, what about him? Prime minister in Canada? Nobody cared. They don't really care about this when you actually do it. They're just looking for something to be angry about. I think most people probably look at this and they're like, these people are dumb. And that's about it. And they carry on. End of story. It's amazing to me that you actually have white progressives who are more offended than the actual demographic that's supposed to be offended. And we're supposed to bend the knee to this. Yeah, okay. And isn't it hilarious that it's literally leftist white people complaining to white people to stop being racist? Gotta love it. Here's another photo of this woman. She did like a split thing. And there's a lot of these where they're like, we're together or whatever. This is not blackface. This is not. Half her face is white. She's trying to show unity of some sort. She says, just because we are black on the outside doesn't mean that we are black on the inside. Racist people are the true black hearted ones. They are, the, they are black on the inside and they do not know it. Here's some posts that are really bad. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Instagram user. St. Hoax captured screen grabs of eight particularly egregious examples. Many influencers have been sharing photos of themselves wearing blackface as an act of solidarity. Even after receiving backlash, some are still refusing to take down their posts. How can you spread awareness about a subject you know so little about? If you genuinely care about a cause, the least you can do is educate yourself about it. In the episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, it was called Lethal Weapon 5. And I believe it was Mac, one of the characters, wants to be, I think Danny Glover was the actor. And so he talks about donning blackface. Everyone immediately tells him it's racist and wrong and not to do it. And he's dumb and he, and he thinks it's okay. They literally have a whole section of dialogue explaining why you can't do this and what's wrong with it. Actually talking about other actors. And it's hilarious, man. It's, it's funny. These people don't know what comedy is and they take this stuff down. It was actually, in a sense, an educational view. These people in It's Always Sunny are bad people. They are not good people. They are sociopathic drug addicts. And you are supposed to look down on them for the awful things they do. And they pull this. I swear, man. I swear. Do you know what? I have very little sympathy for some of these people. Notably, none other than Howard Stern. Under fire for past use of blackface skit with the N-word. 
Poor Howard Stern. I will shed no tears for you, good sir, because you insulted the people who were fighting against PC culture. Not all of them, but you want to come out and act high and mighty and throw your hat in with these lunatics who are literally banning books, movies, and art. And you thought you'd be safe. No. The mob is a horde of zombies. They will consume whatever they can. That includes you, and there is nothing you can do to stop them. You, you guys, please stop apologizing to people who didn't expect you to apologize in the first place and wouldn't accept your apology even if you did. They don't care about what you did. They just want to feign moral superiority so they can sleep at night thinking that they're the good guys, but they're extremists. Howard Stern, you, you reap what you have sown when you throw your hat into this, into this uh, uh, bucket. Whatever, I don't know, whatever the saying is. Howard Stern has become the latest in a long list of celebrities and power players to be forced to confront their use of blackface. On Thursday, a video appeared online showing Stern in a minstrel style makeup. Okay, now it's literally blackface. Literally using the N-word. It was cut together with a recent appearance on The View during which he claimed he'd never used that word. Hilarious. Howard Stern, how dare you? How dare you? Sources tell page six. The clip, a skit that seems to take aim at Ted Danson's infamous 1993 blackface performance with then girl- girlfriend Whoopi Goldberg, was part of Stern's New Year's Rotten Eve pageant, which aired on pay per view on December 31st that year. In the video, he plays Danson and addresses his longtime black sidekick Robin Quivers, making corny and highly racist jokes. I'm, I'm not going to read those jokes. Wow. What do you call a black rocket scientist? And then he says the N word. That's, that's, wow. When his audience seems shocked by the language, Stern defends himself by saying, Whoopi wrote it. Then he calls a quivers some some slurs and then excuses himself saying, Whoopi wrote that. Man, and she didn't, mind you. That's the the joke. The point of the skit seems to be that Danson used Goldberg's apparent blessing of his behavior as license to be freely racist. Longtime Stern employee Steve Grillo of the Aftershock XL podcast network, who worked on the special, tells page six that he doesn't believe Stern is racist and that he never used that language off air. He said that because the show was on pay-per-view and wasn't governed by Stern's longtime nemesis, the FCC, their attitude was, we've got the whole world watching. Let's push the limits. The leash was off and they were going to be rabid dogs. Is that somehow a defense in today's day and age? Dude, they've canceled people for much, much less than this. Sorry, Howard Stern. You threw, you threw, you threw him with this lot. Then you can deal with him. I'm not going to shed a tear for you. The clip was first posted by controversial filmmaker, filmmaker Tariq Nasheed and bubbled up among right wing Twitter users, possibly because Stern came out against President Trump and was eventually retweeted by Donald Trump Jr. A rep for Stern didn't get back to us. Yes, listen, right now we are in the midst of a culture war now breaking into a culture revolution. You have people who probably don't like Trump voting for Trump simply because he embodies anti PC. That's one of the reasons many people voted for him in 2016. Right now, the two principal factions are the people who don't want to burn books and the people who want to burn books. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. Well, Howard Stern, you are someone who has books for which must be burned. And you are now on the side of those who would burn them. Guess what? They are going to come and burn your books. I mean that figuratively, not literally, although I think there's probably some books by Howard Stern they probably want to burn. But I'm, I'm rather surprised to see That someone like Howard Stern, who is 100 times more offensive than Donald Trump, act like he's all high and mighty, like he's better than Trump because Trump says naughty words. Listen, man, I'd absolutely prefer someone other than Trump. That's for sure. But what do you get? They prop up Biden. They really want Trump to win. I got to tell you, man. But anyway, look, the the, the main point, I want to get into the Trump stuff on this segment. We're talking about the influencers. You, the the people who are these influencers, and yes, to an extent, people like Howard Stern, They are trying to apologize and pander to a group of people who never cared about what you think and feel in the first place. They never actually cared about any of these causes or issues. In fact, in Seattle, where they have the Chaz, the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, you had a couple black women come up and say you're hijacking the movement. And what happened? They were booed and shouted down. So you know what? I guess it's okay that these people aren't apologizing for it. I don't think they understand what they're actually pandering to, however. So you got to appreciate the irony, the paradox, the broken cognitive dissonance, whatever. These people want to claim that all these things are racist and then their supporters actually go out and do it. When they complain about it, their supporters say, shut up. 
So what are you going to get? It's chaos. It is purely a chaotic, destructive force that no knows limits, that knows no limits, and will certainly just continue to get worse. Now, if you were someone like Howard Stern, if you're a comedian, I'd imagine the only thing you could actually do is stand up for yourself. But they won't. They won't. They'll bend the knee. And it's creating this really weird thing that's happening. There, there are some people, I won't name them, some comedians, who used to be shock personalities, edgy boys. But they were always on the left as edgy boys. As the left has become the moral authoritarians, they tried to stick with the left, but now their comedy makes no sense. And the left comes right for him. Case in point, Howard Stern. Maybe you should have stuck to, true to your principles. Maybe they never had principles in the first place. And I think that's probably it. I bet Howard Stern never actually cared. He just wanted to be, a, 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 you know, shocking. And so there you go. Whatever, man. He sold his career out when he joined Sirius anyway. So I'll leave it there. I got one more segment coming up for you in just a few minutes, and I will see you all shortly.